Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Here I have a dye bath that has a little bit of Caribbean blue left over from dyeing some yarn. Uh, I had, goodness, around 24 cups of water total with at least four, five, six, seven or eight tablespoons of white vinegar. And I want to reuse this dye bath with 100 grams of yarn in the form of a sock blank. Now a sock blank is a knit piece of fabric that is created with the intention for you to dye it and then unravel it. And what I thought would be really fun to do today is to do some high immersion, some space dyeing of this. I plan to come in with different colors of dye stocks and add it at various points. <laughs> and the colors are gonna spread a lot, but I also don't know how much they'll spread. I don't think I've ever done this with this much water volume already in here. And I'm really excited to see where it's going to go. Before we bring over some more color, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Cindy. Cindy, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you're gonna love the sock blank. Now, if you want to learn more about any of my tools and equipment, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. In normal circumstances, I probably would have started off with a fresh dye bath for this project. However, there is no reason why you can't reuse the same dye bath for multiple projects, especially if the color that's left in there is related to what you're going to be doing. And I already had a hot dye bath, so why not reuse this? but I wanna start adding some colors. And so this is the end. Oh my gosh, there must've been a little bit of powder on the cap because I have some black speckles going in immediately. But I'm gonna start adding some true black acid dye. Now, just a little bit. We're gonna see this color spread a lot. <laughs> um, you can see that it is spreading down the sides. We have a huge water volume in here. And again, I don't know quite what is going to happen, but looking at that curl of dye go through is so much fun. And so instead of stopping and hopping in front of the camera, I'm going to just talk while we're here and I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes before we come and add our next color. Now this sock blank is double stranded, which means that it had two strands of yarn held together. The Stroll Fingering Weight yarn that's 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And so when we eventually go and unravel this, we will get two matched 50 gram balls of yarn uh, and the yarn, as I said, it'll be matched. And so whatever random pattern we create on the yarn will be corresponding on both of the skeins. And so then if you're gonna make socks from it, they will be matched. A sock blank has a little bit less surface area than just a skein of yarn because some of uh, the yarn is in between those stitches. So that can also add to some of the fun pattern and shape that we get. I am so excited. <laughs> I know I probably should have started with like the brighter colors that I'm going to add first and then gone in for the black, but there's no harm with this. None whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and see you in about eight and a half minutes. Uh, and then we'll think about what other colors that we may want to bring in. But my goal for this was to have some fun. Oh, I should also add, this particular sock blank was pre-soaked in water that did have some acid in it. I thought I would use it for another project, but then didn't have enough dye to also dye this blank. So that doesn't always make a huge difference, especially because I added the blank to a dye bath that had acid in it. So you can pre-soak in just plain tap water. But anyway, it pre-soaked overnight. I'll see you in a bit. That ended up being closer to 20 minutes, mainly <laughs> because I needed to get files off the SD card and so I had to wait for that transfer to finish. Okay, I am liking these dark tones. I wanna to bring in a little more darkness, but also a little more warmth. 
Uh, this is some 1% stock solution of pecan brown. And I'm just bringing it in in a few areas. <laughs> I do plan to go for brights eventually, but I wanted to start with our dark, moodier colors. I mean, honestly, I'm really liking what this is doing just on its own and the like cool background color it's giving. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It is so fun and I'll never get tired at watching like that dye just like spread and move. But I know I've already said that. Okay, this time for real, 10 minutes, I'll come back and we'll add either some yellow, some pink or some blue or maybe a little bit of all three. Okay, I am going to move the blank, trying to bring some of the lighter areas up or maybe they should go down, I don't know. Uh, this is actually really reminiscent of a blank I dyed many, many, many years ago uh, with food coloring, but that's about to change as I come in with some brilliant yellow. I thought about trying to do things in some kind of gradient way, uh, but then I realized as I just poured, I'm just going randomly all over. It's gonna be a random progression, random color, random blending. We won't necessarily feel rainbow in this, but we might. Uh, and yeah, I guess everything I think is a 1% dye stock that I'm using today, except our the blue that I might add is maybe a random concentration that I don't know what it is. So we'll have to see there. But so far, Everything is looking kind of cool. See you in 10 minutes. Next up is some deep magenta. Where are we going to add you? There. Add a little bit there. The thing is, I know it's going to spread to the edges, so it doesn't entirely matter if I add it in the center. Maybe a hint more right there. Eek, I have some going down the side. See you in 10 minutes. I thought I was recording and it wasn't. I just poured on blue. I didn't move the yarn beforehand and I tried to focus on areas where I hadn't added much color before. Whoops. The only note that I have for the blue concentration wise is that it says not 1% random. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let's wait 10 minutes and then we'll move things and decide if I want to add any more color. Do we want to keep building it up? What do we want to do? Woohoo! All right, let's take a look at this. Ooh, there's way more yellow left than I thought. Ooh, I am tempted and torn between adding more dark and I'm leaning towards it. I have like a tiny bit more of this black dye. And I think, I think I'm gonna add that in for a last little bit of something. And at this stage, I'm gonna let everything heat for 30 minutes so we can finish setting all the color. Here we are. Hilariously, we are in a place that is similar to where we started uh, in the sense that we have a little bit of blue left in the pan. Now I'm picking up the blank like this to just try to drain out some of that liquid that's in here because that'll help it cool off a little bit faster. But now I'm gonna go set this aside so it can cool completely so we can wash it clean the pan before I use it for another project. Let's wash our sock blank. I'm really hoping there won't be any bleeding. It's so hard to say what color this is right now because it's very earthy, very green, honestly. I'd say probably a combination of the blue with the brown and the yellow gave us a lot of green notes. Let's add a little bit of dish soap. 
and see if we get color coming out or not. That's the thing with not measuring how much dye you're using. Uh, it can then be harder to know if you're using an appropriate amount. I do see a little bit of some color come out, but in my experience, when I see color come out after a black or something, that should resolve pretty quickly. And it looks like it's the black that's bleeding a little bit, not the blue. And so there could be some particles that were undissolved because we saw at the beginning some powder go in. Um, so I am not feeling super worried. And in fact, it's looking clear already. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rinse this out one more time. Then I'm gonna put the blank through my spin dryer and go hang it up to dry so we can see what the final blank looks like. This sock blank turned out so fun that I thought about trying to create a tonal yarn that's not in a blank that evokes some of the same feelings. Whether or not it could be paired with a blank or not, uh, I filled a kettle with a bunch of water and then starting with a dry skein of Stroll fingering weight yarn, the exact same yarn that's in the blank, I added it to probably first a little bit of brown, maybe then a little bit of black, I layered a bunch of these same colors on a little bit of a t at a time, sometimes letting the yarn sit in the pot longer to absorb the color, other times uh, just setting the yarn aside, adding more color, and then immediately adding the yarn back in. And I continued to do this until I was satisfied with the color from just glancing slightly off camera at this blank until I felt like I had something that would coordinate well with it. I let the yarn heat for 30 minutes after I added the last color and then I let it cool and washed it off camera. I know you all really want to see the sock blank because that's the focal point of the video and this is just a bonus skein, but let's start here and look at just the subtle shifts in hue as we go through. This happens because when you dye a tonal yarn and you get some, a little more dye in some places than others, and then you do this repeatedly in multiple colors, you end up with something where if you swap to a grayscale, it's gonna feel very, very even. Uh, yes, it's a little darker and a little lighter there, but we have these shifts between these teals and more green. I think that there's one little light patch where we see a little bit more pink and yellow in there. Um, I feel a little more pink through there on that side as well. Now, this is more green than what I was going for. Probably because I didn't have more black, so I used brown, which is a little bit more yellow. Uh, and then I added maybe a little more yellow than I needed to, and I couldn't quite claw back from that without adding a ton more pigment. But I do feel like I ended up with something that feels related to our blank. Like this blue in here matches the blues that we have throughout. And I would say there are a few elements of green here in the blank, like through there. But the fact that this is green brings in more of the yellow tones, which is just fun. I feel like I'm totally going about things backwards here. Now, you could use these yarns together in one project. If you were gonna stripe them, I do think you would feel that delineated stripe because when you go and unravel the blank, yes, you're gonna have a lot of the color, sort of muted color as a base that we feel over here, but because we have but because we have so much black and brown, we're gonna have a lot of speckles. This yarn is gonna be very busy. We're gonna have light and dark patches and just a lot of shift between colors, which partially you can tell when I'm pulling the skein apart, uh, you can see that we have those light colors within those stitches. Each color may have gone through the blank. We have lots of color on both sides, but there's resist from the stitches. And so that's gonna give us a very mottled sort of speckly look in the end. And so I think that something stripey could be really, really fun. You have a lot of options, but let's 
go back to where I normally would start and look at the blank. This is so cool looking. It feels very graffiti, but with a layer, I hate to say a layer of grime over it, but like a layer of dirt over graffiti. So it's like muted. I don't know. Um, but I was starting to say that I figured since I showed the dyeing of tonal really quickly, just at the end of the dyeing process, it made sense to start my brain was there when it came into diving into the rest of this project. But this blank is so, so fun. I love the randomness of the colors. I love how much everything did stay where I put it, but it also spread out. And so we have this very splattered feel of the colors, but then the muted color veil. Ooh! The wrong side of the blank got a lot of the dark color. I think that when I poured the color on, a lot of it went through the blank and then down and spread beneath it. Oh, so much fun. Cindy, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I had so much fun dyeing the sock blank and then some yarn to go along with it. And I really hope that you're going to love it too. If you would like to learn how to become a lab partner like Cindy, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I'll have them linked down in the video description. Cindy, thank you again. Oh, and I did not intentionally pick my shirt to kind of go with the yarn today. That's just another happy accident. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it was a lot of fun to take a colorway that I had just dyed a couple days before and then try to emulate this feeling onto a skein of sock yarn. This is something that I want to try to play around with more in the future. And so if you'd like to see me do that, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Engaging with my videos by giving them a thumbs up and a comment and of course watching the videos is the biggest way that you can help support the content here and it's free, especially if you enjoy the content and are going to be watching it anyway. It's a complete win-win-win. Of course, you can also go and check out the yarn I have in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, almost all of the yarn has been featured in one of my videos, and so you can go watch exactly how I created the yarn that then you can use to knit, weave, crochet, or do whatever yarn crafts uh, your heart desires. And I just really want to thank all of you for making it possible for me to spend my days playing with color and yarn. I love what I do. I hope that comes through in the videos, and I hope to bring you a lot of more fun yarn dyeing and colorful adventures in the future. Thank you so much for watching.